This video consists of problems 1 to 7 on the review packet for quiz 5, 1 to, or 5, 3 to 5, 6. So the first two problems, page 397, 71, and 72, ask you to find the cosine of x equals 0.4, so find x. The thing I want you to notice is that this range of, of uh, values for the answer have to be between 0 and pi, which means that it's in radians. So if you're going to do this problem in your calculator, be in radian mode. Well, all you have to do is the inverse cosine of 0.4, be in radian mode, and write down the decimal. I think the book wanted it to the nearest hundredth, so it's just 1.16. Same thing for number 72, the tangent of x equals 2, so x is the inverse tangent of 2. And as long as you're in radian mode, the answer should come out as 1.11. For problem 2, page 397, number 67 and 69, they want you to graph these uh, trig functions and find the maximum and minimum value. I'm actually going to change this a little bit. I'm going to make this the range from 0 to 2 pi so that we're not looking at the entire graph. So when you go put the trig graphs in your calculator, make sure you are in radian mode. Make sure that you change your window so you can see what you need to see. Please make the x min 0 and the x max 2 pi or 6.28. For the y max and min, you probably can leave it at 10 and negative 10 unless you uh, want to shorten it or lengthen it. When you type into y1 equals sine of x plus sine 2 of x, you get a graph that looks like this. This is really just one period of this graph. Well, the maximum is this value here, and the minimum is going to be down over here. You'll need to use the max and min functions on your calculator to find them. So you should find the maximum is at x equals 0.94, and the y value is 1.76. And for the minimum, you should get x equals about 5.35 and y is equal to negative 1.76. To graph the second function in your calculator, you can't type this in. So we have to type it into the calculator a little bit different. So what I want you to do is I want you to put parentheses, then call up sine, put in x, close the sine, close that parentheses, and then put in square. The picture you end up getting on your calculator should look something like this. So your maximum is here, and your minimum is here. So again, using the max and min functions on your calculator, you should find out the max is at x is 1.96, y is 2.70. And for the minimum, x is at 4.71, and y is equal to negative 1. In problem number 3, uh, 420, number 20 and 24, these are the ones where they want you to write the equation for the damped harmonic motion. And they actually specifically tell you that for problems 19 to 22, where this one falls, they want you to write the equation y equals ke to the negative ct cosine omega t. And then for problem 24, they want you to write the equation y equals ke to the negative ct sine of omega t. When you're going to plug this information into the equation, please make sure you pay attention to what information they give you. This is frequency. The frequency, we set that equal to omega over 2 pi and solve for omega. So we find out that omega is... Well, depending on what you do, if you change 0.6 into a fraction, which is what I did, I turned it into 3 fifths, I ended up with 6 pi over 5. Otherwise, uh, if you write it as 1.2 pi, that works as well. And then k is just the initial amplitude, c is the dampening coefficient cosine of 1.2 pi t, 
just don't forget the variable in your dampening equation. I am not going to ask you to graph this on the test because you know that the graph looks something like this. And we didn't talk about how to graph those by hand. For number 24, they gave you the period instead of the frequency. So that one gets set equal to 2 pi over omega. And when you solve for omega, you find that it's just 2 pi. So y is equal to 1 e to the negative 1 t sine of 2 pi t. Problem number 4, page 420, 16, and 18, wanted you to find a function that models the simple harmonic motion having these properties, assuming that the displacement is at a maximum at time t equals 0. Remember when the maximum is at t equals 0? is a cosine function. So we're going to write the equation y equals a cosine omega t for simple harmonic motion. Well, since I was given the period, I set that equal to 2 pi over omega, and I find out that omega is uh, pi over 4. You should get 8 omega is equal to 2 pi, so omega is 2 pi over 8, which reduces to pi over 4. So the equation is y equals 35 cosine of pi over 4t. For number 18, they gave you the frequency instead of the period. So set that equal to omega over 2 pi. So omega in this case is 120 pi. Y equals 6.25 cosine of 120 pi t is the equation. For problem 397 on page, or page uh, 397, number 77, I did not draw the picture here, but you don't actually need the picture to help you solve this problem. This equation models the function of a wave passing by an offshore piling, and it's the height of the wave going by that piling. H of t is equal to 3 cosine pi over 10 t, where h is the height in feet, above mean sea level at time t seconds. The first thing wanted me to find the period of the wave. Well, remember you find the period by first finding k or omega, depending on what you want to call it. And the period is 2 pi over k. So that's 2 pi over pi over 10, which is 2 pi times the reciprocal of the denominator. The pi's go away, and 2 times 10 is 20. So the period is 20 seconds. For the wave height, the wave height, they said, um, is the vertical distance between the trough and the crest. So when you have this wave, this down here is called the trough, and this is called the crest. Well, if you think about this trig graph as having an imaginary line going down the center of it, the amplitude tells you how high and how low the graph goes. So the distance between the trough and the crest must be 6 feet. Problem 6 is on page 421. It's problem number 27, and it's about a bobbing cork. A cork floating in a lake is bobbing in a simple harmonic motion. Its displacement above the bottom of the lake is modeled by the equation y equals 0.2 cosine of 20 pi t plus 8 where y is measured in meters and t is measured in minutes. Find the frequency of the motion of the cork. Well, in order to find the frequency, you need to find the period. And the period is 2 pi over k, so we found out k is 20 pi. So 2 pi over 20 pi is 1 tenth. The frequency is just the reciprocal of the period, so the frequency must be 10 cycles per minute because frequency is always cycles per unit of time. And in this case, oops, not cycles of minutes, cycles per minute. And I believe this problem said that t was in minutes. The next thing wants me to draw a graph. Well, when you draw the graph, I only need you to draw one period. This is the line that goes through the center of the graph. And the line that goes through the center of the graph is at 8. The amplitude tells you how far above and below 
that middle line you're going to go. So if you're going to go 0.2 above it, you're going to be at 8.2. And if you're 0.2 below it, you're at 7.8. So that's how high and low the graph is going to go. It's a cosine function, which means it starts at either a max or min. Since this is positive, we start at a maximum. The period was 1 tenth, so half of that is 1 20th, and half of that is 1 40th, so this is 3 over 40. So the graph starts at a maximum, middle, minimum, middle, maximum. And there's the graph for one period. The last thing they want me to do is to find the maximum displacement of the cork above the lake bottom. Well, the maximum above the lake bottom is just the maximum that it goes to. The water starts 8 meters above the lake bottom. So the highest the wave goes is 8.2 meters above the lake bottom. The last problem in this video is from page 421, number 30. It's the predator population model, which is an excellent model for sine and cosine functions. In a predator-prey model, the predator population is modeled by the function y equals 900 cosine of 2t plus 8,000, where t is measured in years. The first thing I want to find is the maximum population. Remember that this is the line that goes down the middle of the graph. It's called the vertical shift. The amplitude tells you how far above and below that line you're going to go. So the maximum population has to be 8,000 plus 900, or 8,900, um, whatever the animal is. If I had asked you for the minimum, the minimum number would have just been 8,000 minus 900, which is 7,100. I didn't ask for that. I asked for the max, but that's how you would find the max or the minimum. The second question asks for the length between successive periods. Well, the question is, how often does this reoccur? Well, let's find the period. To find the period, you need to know k. So the period is 2 pi over k, and k is 2, which is 1 pi. Well, 1 pi is 3.14, and since time is in years, the time between successive periods of maximum population must be 3.14 years.